engine room, 6543. They're going to be powering through that middle thousand. And then the bow pair is their job to keep it really sharp. But the bottom line is they've got to be in the race right from the start. And they, they know they've got a quick last three, four hundred metres. And that is going to be testament. And they're going to need that. Put the, the, the place up. Yeah, we know what we need. Can't get enough for you. Now the other day I was going through some books and old journals just trying to throw out some junk and I came across this book in particular. Um, it had quite a few pages spare so I use it as a notebook now but when I was looking through the first few pages I noticed that in 2014 I was actually trying to keep a food diary. Now it didn't last very long because I think there's only sort of 10 days worth of food diary logged in there. Um, but it's quite interesting because that's 2014 is obviously the first year I won my first uni world championships in the men's eight in Amsterdam, um, and so I was I was interested. I was looking through. I saw some of my old ergo scores in there. What I was eating for my first, second breakfast, and my lunches and stuff like that. And so today we're basically going to relive a typical day from April 2014. What I would eat for my first breakfast, second breakfast, lunch, right through to pudding, and I'm going to sort of tally up all the macros and see how different my sort of nutrition maybe was back then to how it is now sort of fast forwarding I guess six years almost seven soon <laughs> so there's breakfast all sorted um, so I'm having six Weetabix with uh, one large banana uh, a pint of semi skimmed milk I have an apple with it and I'll also have a mug of green tea. Um, back in 2014 I hadn't discovered coffee yet. I think it was Johnny Walton that got me onto coffee during our recce trip in Rio at the beginning of the at the beginning of the 2015 season, I believe. So 2015 is when I first started drinking coffee and now I now I have coffee every single day. But 2014 I wasn't drinking coffee, so I'm starting my day with a green tea. So it's just coming up to half past 11. We're about to tuck into second breakfast. Usually I would have eaten this breakfast, um, I imagine by 10 o'clock in the morning, probably latest. Um, so this meal is to help fuel the second session of the day. By now I would have already done one session and looking at the diary, I would have just finished a weight session um, where I was back squatting 160 kilos for sets of four, which I don't think is too bad. Um, and so what we've got is, <clears throat> we've got two English muffins with ham and a fried egg and we've got a whole can of baked beans um, again this is like I haven't eaten in a long time this was when we had our original chef at Cavisham, Omar um, he used to make these quite regularly um, now we've got a new guy Martin who's also amazing he's great he lives just around the corner from me which is, which is convenient um, but looking at the program, the next session would have been just a 12K steady paddle. So, you know, this is mainly to uh, replenish the muscles and help me recover from the weight session. And we've got lots of carbohydrates in here and a bit of fiber to sort of help fuel me for the 12K row coming up now. So it's now coming up to half past one and I've just sat down to have my lunch. I'm currently sat at my desk again, editing a video that hopefully should have come out last week. Um, but it's just very nice and simple. Um, We've got just a plain baguette with some ham and some cheese and some coleslaw and plenty of butter. Um, you know, nothing too crazy. I'm, I've always been a big fan of sandwiches 
and this is enough to sort of help me recover from that 12k paddle I guess I would have had that day and this will tie me over for whatever the third session was coming up next. So I've just got back from my walk. Um, it's surprising isn't it how when the sun goes away and it's a bit more windy and maybe a bit drizzly how people suddenly adhere to the lockdown rules and don't spend all day sat by the river sunbathing and drinking alcohol. Weird. I just managed to have an hour long walk and I met two people during that walk compared to yesterday where I maybe met over 100. But anyway, leave that behind. Um, just quite from the walk. Um, so now I would usually have uh, like a snack that would tie me over between finishing the third session and having my dinner. Um, so today we're going to have some more cereal, so I'll get some more Weetabix, get the, uh, the dog bowl out again, fill that up with six Weetabix, another pint of milk, um, and then it says two slices of toast with butter and peanut butter. So that'll be my snack to tie me over for dinner. Dinner I think is going to be some sort of chicken breasts, um, but I'm going to crack on, get my snack on, start some more editing, and I'll get back to you at dinner time. So I've left the video rendering in the background. While that's going on, I'm going to watch some Netflix, I think. I've suddenly got into this um, TV show, Ozark. I, I don't think it's new. It's definitely not new. It's got too many seasons to be new. But I've just found it, and I'm really enjoying it. But um, I thought I'd just show you. I have got the uh, peanut butter and toast and the, um, the six sweet Twix. Just in case you thought that I was listing all these things and actually eating something completely different, I'm not. I'm eating the six sweet bix with a pint of milk, two slices of toast with butter and peanut butter. Now, when I was making that, I suddenly thought, are you someone that puts butter underneath your peanut butter like I do? I, I always butter my toast regardless of what I put on top of it. Some people think that's really weird, um, and some people love it. And I think if you haven't tried it, you should try it. Obviously, it adds a load of calories to it that you wouldn't normally have, but you know, comment down below. Do you? butter your peanut butter or do you just go naked peanut butter on your toast okay so it's now 7 30 and it's time for dinner i'm actually really hungry so i can't wait to get stuck into this for dinner we have gone for okay so we have two chicken breasts stuffed with philadelphia and wrapped in parma ham we've got a, about 400 grams of potato wedges and a little bit of salad now, other than the apple I had for breakfast, that's the only other bit of fruit and veg I've had all day. So, so far I've learned that a couple of years ago, my diet was predominantly carbohydrates with a few bits of protein thrown in there. Um, and another thing that I've noticed as I've been tallying up the macros as the day goes on, is that I'm actually on track to consume more calories today than I did on my cheat day a couple of weeks ago. If you watched that, I almost hit 6,000 calories in a day. Um, and I'm fairly certain that today I'm going to sort of pass that. I don't know how much by, hopefully not a lot, but I definitely think I'm gonna be eating maybe two or 300 calories more than I did on my cheat day. So that gives you a pretty good idea of the amount of calories I was consuming back in 2014, just to sort of cope with the workload and the amount of training that we were doing. So, you know, you're eating almost 6,000 calories a day just to maintain weight and recover from each session and fuel yourself up for the next one. So, I'm pretty hungry. I'm gonna get stuck into this. And next up will be pudding. So, uh, last up for today is, of course, pudding. And on the food diary, it did say um, two small pots of Ben & Jerry's. I mean, it refers to like the little sharing pots. Um, I could only find the ones from haagen when I went to the shops yesterday. Um, so instead I opted for a big tub of the Ben & Jerry's. This one is called So Far So Good. I've never had it before, but um, you know, I wouldn't buy a pot if I wasn't thinking about eating it. So this puppy probably has over a thousand calories in it. Um, so I'm going to get on with that I think, chow that down. Um, the reason I went for the big pot rather than buying the little haagen ones was because when I was looking at my food diary from the following day, I think I must have gone to Five Guys because there was two double, two double bacon cheeseburgers with Cajun fries, which I'm assuming is Five Guys. And then there was a waffle with, uh, I think it's vanilla ice cream with caramel sauce, plus an extra uh, scoop of chocolate ice cream. So 
that's what I would have eaten this time tomorrow if I was Matt back in 2014. So I think, you know, if I'm preparing for a waffle and ice cream, I think this is a good substitute. So I don't think I'm eating any more food today. If I do, I'll touch base. If I haven't, you know, I'll, I'll try keeping this a little bit shorter. My last ones have been quite long, so I don't, you know, I don't want to drag them on for too much. But if you did enjoy it, leave a like. If you're new here, subscribe. You know, the support is always welcome. And um, as always, below in the comments, drop down any ideas you might have for future videos. I always want to sort of create videos that are going to be of interest to you um, and maybe help you in your own career or just in general life. So, you know, have a great day. I'm going to get on and eat my ice cream before it melts and um, I'll catch you next week.